Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today in the shop we have a smooth European sedan, a 2004 BMW 525i, with rear wheel drive, 2.5 liter straight six, super, super smooth car. I'll give it some credit. Very clean, 110,000 miles. It's spotless. It's here for some maintenance and one of the customer complaints is the airbag warning light is on. So I already did the requested maintenance, brake pads all around, spark plugs, water pump, thermostat, um, super straightforward procedure. I was pleasantly surprised. All the stuff under the hood took about one hour. Amazing. I can see why some people actually like working on these. Um, but let's take a look at the scanner, see why this airbag warning light is coming on. So with the key on, you want a battery maintainer. Got our topped on at 13 volts. See, it's putting out 30 amps. Uh, these cars, whenever the key's on, they, you know, consume a lot of current. So, it's always a good idea to have a battery maintainer. What do we have here? There's our airbag warning light. And we have this passenger restraint system. Fault in passenger restraint system affecting airbag belt tensioner or belt force limiter. Continue to wear the safety belt. So I guess if you have no problems, you don't have to wear the seatbelt. Pretty nice. What is the code that's setting this fault? So you might think that in the safety restraint system, we have no trouble codes. So what the heck? Um, this code here, SFZ Satellite Vehicle Center. SFZ, resistance, firing circuit, safety battery terminal, too high. That's a current code, even though it says history. That's the code that's tripping every time you start the car. So let's look this up. See what this safety battery terminal resistance is all about. And see what we can check well since we're here at the scanner let's take a look and see if the live data has anything interesting and we just have three data pids voltage from SGM terminal R terminal 15 okay not helpful we don't have any resistance values about fault guidance no special function matched. Okay. Anything else? Actuation test. Delete fault memory. So I already tried that. The fault com uh, comes right back. So now we have to go to service info, pull up some wiring diagrams, see what this battery sensor resistance is all about. All right. So doing some research on all data here. This is the redrawn diagram. And I found this vehicle center satellite. It's a module. Here's our safety battery terminal generator. And here we have connector numbers. So this is the entire diagram for all of the safety restraint systems. And this is our safety and gateway module and apparently there are satellite modules like this one in the center all the driver door module passenger door module passenger airbag inflator see there's a right b pillar satellite so they're like sub modules i guess left b pillar satellite and then this center satellite which connects to the driver's seat belt tensioner generator and the safety battery terminal generator so when it says generator that means it's an explosive device current goes through here whenever this module triggers it and 
I'm guessing it's to disconnect the positive battery terminal. Um, so right here in overview of airbag modules we can see number 11 is our safety battery terminal. That's right on the battery. There's the positive battery terminal and apparently this thing explodes and cuts basically cuts the wire in half so you don't get it basically disconnects the battery um, <laughs> I don't know if it's safe to have a little explosion next to the battery but that's the way BMW does it again G19A is the actual generator safety battery terminal and in the little picture here there it is this is in the trunk there's our connector X10467 which is right here X10467 and are there any specs uh, well it says ignition circuit safety system airbag ignition capacitors provide ignition firing power gas generator seat fault memory Disconnect any one of the plug connections between the airbag control unit and gas generator. Use a suitable adapter to measure the resistance of the gas generator. They tell you to measure the resistance. So, you know, the myth that your voltmeter can set off an airbag, uh, I don't think so. This is OEM instructions. They tell you it should be between 1.6 to 5.6 ohms. or 2.1 to 5.6 ohms if test one or two are okay check the airbag control unit okay so so what I want to do is turn the key off let the system power down disconnect the uh, you know that generator at the positive battery cable and then just short the two pins together and see, erase the codes and see if the code now sets for resistance too low. That will just verify wiring integrity all the way to the satellite module. And then we can do a resistance check on the actual generator on that battery cable. So I think that's the easiest thing to do. All right, so let's shut the key off. Come back here. And get all this crap out of the way. So this whole thing comes out. And you see the battery. We get some light back here. And we'll disconnect that sense or uh, generator. Okay, so here's the setup. This is the little wire that goes to that generator. It's housed in integral to the battery cable. Sure enough, we have a brown and brown and red wires right here at this connector. And then that little wire goes down there. Okay, perfect. So let me disconnect this thing and basically just short these two pins together and see if resistance is too low. We can measure the resistance of the generator with a, an ohmmeter. All right, here we go. So it's just a little clip. There we go. Perfect. I'll just back probe that and short it out with a test light. I think that'll be a pretty safe test. Okay, so in this connector, I just have a back probe through a little test light, which should be basically zero ohms when it's not lit. Let's see. Once we turn the key on, reset the codes. Yep, there's our airbag light. It should say, well, let's see what it says.
So clear fault code, yes. Read fault code. Open circuit. Current code, 9B01. So it, now it's different. Before it said resistance too high. Hmm. It doesn't say short circuit. Well, we could just short it out. Okay, let's turn the key off again. Let's com let's completely short it out. All right, now I put a 30 amp fuse in parallel with the test lay, so that should be a direct short circuit. Let's see what the new code is. This is open circuit. Clear DTCs. Yes. It's just open circuit. Okay, well, maybe the code description isn't completely clear. Let's plug it back into the battery sensor. We can measure the resistance just to get a spec and then you know, see if anything changes. All right, so now I got my ohmmeter across the two pins of the actual igniter. And we have 0 0.6 ohms. Now, there is a shorting bar inside that connector that we have to disable in order to measure the resistance. So I'm just gonna put a terminal in here that fits to push that shorting bar out of the way. We have 2.4 ohms. It, that looks reasonable. So now, now that we have that spec, let's plug this sucker back in. Make sure the orientation's correct. Yeah, that should be correct there. Now let's see if that code comes back. All right, key on, our bag guy is on. Read fault code, clear DTCs, okay. No DTCs. Um, let's see, let's cycle the key off. See the airbag light went away. Let it go to sleep. Open the door. Close the door. And turn the key on. Mr. Airbag. Oh, airbag light went out. No DTCs. Okay, so I think, and I kind of suspected this, right at that connector, if you get a little bit of extra resistance, this thing will not be happy. I mean, you're talking about a fraction of an ohm. We've seen this with other airbag systems where you basically unplug the connector, plug it back in, and the thing is totally happy. So what I'm gonna do is spray a little bit of deoxid on that connector back there. Plug it back in, um, clear all the codes out, and this BMW will be back on the road with no silly warning lights. Um, pretty amazing. No parts required on uh, on this one. That's what it looks like at this point. All right. So for good luck, just a little bit deoxid on these pins. Plug it right back in, and that's it. Sweet, no warning lights, no airbag codes left. The only four codes in the entire vehicle are 
something to do in the AC, fogging sensor, AUC sensor, no idea what that means. And then he has aftermarket bulbs installed for the um, for the headlights. So good deal. No parts required. I might even give this guy a little freebie since he did all the maintenance work. Um, very cool. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.